Hello and welcome back to Bike Matters. Today we're looking at this classically styled number. It's the AJS Modena. When it comes to looks, the Modena has a typical Italian 60s styling to it, which we're quite familiar with from the scooter scene. This one is bright orange. It's not my favorite color of choice, but it still looks great. And it's got lots of chrome work as well. So we've got the uh, front and rear luggage racks as well. And we have these little accents dotted around in chrome, which does look amazing. If we go down to the tires, they're white walled, which really adds to the aesthetics well. I just think it looks cool. Um, indicators and the rear brake are LEDs, which is a really great feature to have on this scooter. The Mona has a really accessible seat height of just 735 millimeters. So it's a, a seat height that's suitable for riders of all heights. It's also worth noting that Alex, the other presenter at Bike Matters, who's six foot four, has sat on the Mona and taken it for a ride as well. And there's plenty of leg room there as well. So it really is a great scooter for all heights. Now, something that really adds to the character of the Modena is just how light it is. It's 95 kilograms. And at the front, it is very light. But when you take it out on the road, which I'll show you later on, this scooter is an absolute hoot to ride. Now, this little scoot does have quite a small fuel tank. It does 4.6 liters, so around about a gallon. But it's got estimated 99 miles per gallon. So, you know, between fuel stops, you're probably looking between 80 and 100 miles. Onto storage. And under the seat of the Modena, there isn't a lot of storage going under there. It's quite limited. You're not going to be fitting a motorcycle helmet at all in there, but enough for a few small bits and pieces like your phone and so on. Uh, there is also a storage option here on the side. Um, again, it's not the biggest, but it'll fit a few spare bits in there. But as standard, you've got the chrome rack into the front and to the rear, which I believe will hold five kilograms a piece. So really decent storage options as standard. The dash and the switch gear on the AJS Modena is as you expect on a vintage style scooter like this. It's all simple and clean and stylish, and it really just goes with the whole aesthetic of this scooter. When it comes to stopping power, the Modena has at the front and rear disc brakes, which also run combined braking system to meet Euro 4 standards. When it comes to power, the Modena packs a 125cc engine, which is air-cooled and four-stroke. It's producing around seven brake horsepower, which doesn't seem like a lot, but give this thing a test ride and I think you end up loving it. The Modena is a really affordable option out there, just £1,659. And reassurance, because you get a two-year parts and labour warranty as well. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're test riding the AJS Modena. Alex in front of us is doing his little test ride on the AGS Cadwell Clubman. So we're both doing our test rides at the same time. And uh, yeah, let's see how we get on with this little fella on the road. It's so light, that front end. It really is. This bike is 95 kilograms, as I said in the studio. So what that equates to on the road is actually, it's, it's not scary as I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be too light, that front end, but actually on the road, it just means it's so agile. You can flick this thing around anywhere. You really can. And it's not one of those ones that you're, you're scared so you put your foot down like when you're trying to do a U-turn or anything like that. It's actually pretty damn decent. You're just getting used to how light it is and away you go. So, it is small, it is light. So, it is basically designed with towns and cities in mind. But we're going to take on some country lanes in a couple of minutes. Uh, just to have some fun. Um, but like I say, it is designed with towns and cities in mind. Um... So it's got little wheels, it's 10 inch wheels. It also has a seat height of 735 millimeters. So very accessible seat height. It'd be suitable for most people. Um, it also has a little dinky uh, fuel tank of 4.6 liters. So it's fine for towns and cities, but it's not really got long journeys in mind at 4.6 liters. But you know, it'll probably do around 99 miles per gallon. So I'm told. Um, so with a 4.6 uh, litre fuel tank you should be good to you know 80 miles ish between stops at a fuel station so not too bad but like I say I just see this scooter living in towns and cities uh, all day long look at it go look at it it's not fast but it's fun and that's what every scooter should be 
you sort of want to just twist it and go and glide around corners and this thing does glide look at that front end you do a lifesaver and the bike wants to move a little bit to the right that's how light this is but it's not it's not unsafe by any means I quite like it it just makes it more fun when you can chat things about like this but it is full on nostalgia it is trying to give you that old you know 60s 70s 80s kind of experience on a scooter it's not all out power it's stylish and it's fun though so this, this scooter brand new I believe is £1,659 so it's very entry level price especially something that looks like this now we are uh, riding this scooter um, when it should be getting running so I should be restricted to 25 mile an hour uh, I'm going to go slightly over that sorry uh, AGS um, but we just really need to give it you know a, a bit of a test so I'm not going to be trying to max it out and get it to top ranges but you know around the 40 mark just to you know give it a good test I don't go doing any long term issues to it but the suspension does have a more than adequate job it is a scooter it's a small scooter it's got little wheels so it's not going to soak up massive craters in the road and stuff like that it's just going to do a great job around towns and cities and it's doing alright job around uh, the country lanes as well to be honest because they're quite bumpy but I'm actually really comfortable the seat is a typical scooter seat it's nice and long uh, so if you did want to have someone on the back I'm sure that would be possible without too much hassle as long as they're not like a giant or something but it's that lightness and the nimbleness of this scooter makes it a hoop it really does and the 10 inch wheels do a respectable job yes if, if I had the option on this I'd be you know trying to put a bit more brake horsepower into it you know a good 9, 10 horsepower would be great on this thing Obviously, with a 125 Lerner Ligu, you can go up to 15 brake horsepower, but you don't really tend to see that on scooters. It's more kind of motorbikes. But get around 9, 10 horsepower on this, and, and with how light it is, it'd be a right old giggle. But, you know, that's just for me. This, I'm not, this scooter is demographic as such. It is a proper nostalgia vintage looking scooter, which isn't about power. It's about fun. It's about being accessible and easy to navigate around town. Well, looking awesome. So, fair play, AJS. Now it has got that little pea shoot exhaust that you might be hearing, um, which obviously you might want to replace at some stage. But it's all optional, it does the job. It's, you know what to expect with a scooter uh, pea shoot exhaust, don't you? Now it's worth mentioning that uh, AGS have a lot of accessories available on this scooter, a lot. Um, so you can really go over the whole mod theme and uh, from loads of mirrors to more chrome accessories to changing the seat you can bore out the engine to 150cc there's a lot of options out there um, which is great because that's what the, these types of scooters are all about is making it, you know, personalising it to how you want it to be I don't think you probably see too many uh, moderners about which haven't been modified but it's also worth mentioning that the, the parts generally are pretty affordable at the same time. I was going to say, I was wondering how you are getting on on it. And it looked like you are having a good time because you yeah. can able to, you, you know, it's so light that you yeah. can... And the 10-inch wheels, like, they do all right. Yeah. You're not going to be getting proper down on it. But, but still, like... 30, 40 respect. mile an hour around Because that's one thing. I saw the 10-inch wheels, obviously, when it came in and I was thinking, ooh. Yeah. But if, it, if they're decent, like, performing well. It is. It's really impressive. Woo! Come on, you little orange beauty! I was really uh, quite apprehensive about getting on this scooter just for how light it is. I was thinking, oh god, and then we got it in like the front end, when you've got it on like it's centre stand, you just go like that and the handlebars go because it's that light. But when you get it on the road and you, you go around a few bends and you get used to it, it's like, oh, I really like this. You can really see why uh, the moderners get such a following like on Facebook there's quite a few I think there's two or three really uh, dominant um, owners groups and fan clubs 
of the moderners and uh, you see like they've all got theirs customized as well and uh, I can now see why it's got such a following because it's giving you that Italian style uh, which everyone loves and uh, at a really low price as Alex is having a whale of the time on the Cadwell Carbon over there and almost gets wiped out by a pigeon um, but the, the thing that I find most about this little scooter which is it doesn't happen every day for most modern scooters it's it does you, it's got character it really has got character this little scooter it's not trying to be something it's not you know it's modern but you know it is retro styled you know it's cheap because it's plastics but that's what kind of makes this scooter dare I say lovable it's fun and it's, it is just what it is it is seven horsepower but it's not like they're trying to hide away from it it's like yeah so what it's for towns and cities it's but like I'm having now I'm going around country lanes and uh, we're having a right little giggle so it is what it is and that's what I like about this moderner and I think that's what's you know and you, you look at it from this riding perspective try and lower it down again you know it's just with the switch gear and the light and the stuff it's just it's got so much character it is what it is so I can now totally appreciate why people love this scooter and it's really economical as well 99 miles per gallon they estimate on this it's about a gallon tank so you know between 80 and 100 miles you'll be getting a tank that's pretty good going isn't it and you're only going to use it around town so how often are you going to be doing 80 to 100 miles it's not very often are you if you're just partnering around town doing a few miles a time so all in all I've been really nicely surprised let's look at how nimble it is I tell you what it'd be awesome to see AJS bring out a uh, Modena which has a, a faster engine keep the same characteristics but a little bit of more powerful motor oh oh I think I'd be in love. I'm not a traditional scooterish at all. I'm not one of those scooter boys or mod or anything like that. So as we're going along here, enjoying the countryside, looking at Alex and the Cadwell Clubman. Uh, it's worth mentioning that this channel is purely powered by Alexa Insurance. So if you're in the UK and you need to get insurance on a moped or a scooter or a motorcycle, Please head on over to lexaminsurance.co.uk, get a quote from them, and hopefully they get you a really nice competitive quote, especially on AJS Medina's. So yeah, head on over. I love this. Yeah, you're getting on well with it. If they, I think they should do a special edition. Yeah. And do an 11 horsepower engine. Just this bang a bigger thing engine would in be insane. So light as well. I'm, I'm actually really getting into the vintage classic scooter side of it. Yeah. This is just an absolute hoot. When I was riding it, like I really like this sort of minimalist sort yeah. of the controls and everything like it's that. Just it's just like, like a PX. Isn't yeah, it? exactly, exactly. But it's just twist and go. You don't have the hassle of gears. Obviously, um, there's no glove box, but for me, that's brilliant because I can. I was just saying that on the yeah. road bit. I was like, yeah, there's storage pants. There's no glove box, but if you're taller, Alex has ridden this. He's six foot four, six foot five. Get on it, absolutely fine. Yeah. There is so much more. Look, you've got all of that. Yeah. You've got proper inches there. It, I'm, I'm really like this. My estimation of this is just going up. Just through the roof, yeah. It's just, I don't know, I'll just... My mind of this scooter has... <laughs> it's gone full circle. Now you can see why there's so many Medina yeah. fans out there. I was there, literally but. saying, like, I can see why people loved it. It's cheap. Yeah. It's and, and you said the same. It's not trying to be something it's not. It is. It is cheap. It is plastic. Yeah, it is a bit, you know, you can bit hear creaky, it. A bit creaky, a bit lightweight. A bit creaky, and but it is what it is. It's looking like vintage. It's that nostalgic only seven horsepower yeah. engine, but it is what it is. It's and like it's unapologetically when, stylish. Yeah, and when you've got a scooter like which looks like this, which I'm really warm into, there's so much character to it. So much character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, it does look a bit plasticky, but it's not trying to hide that. Um, so yeah, with those chrome little bits and pieces though, luggage rack to front, uh, you just lift that clip up and that pulls down.
um, and lots of other little chrome accents. Um, and again, luggage rack on the rear, which you pull that back and lifts up. A little LED light, or quite a big LED light on the back. Not my favourite styling of light, but it is what it is. Uh, pea shooter exhaust. So yeah, if we just look at, uh, we'll go back again. Little 10 inch wheels, which look quite cool. Now the wheels themselves, if you've got a big motorcycle chain to secure it, they're probably not going to fit through there. So you'll probably, if you're securing it, want to go around the suspension. Um, but yeah, just looking at it, it is a stylish little thing. Now, obviously orange isn't my favourite colour. There's lots of others out there though. There really is. White and blues, greys. There's loads of options there. So make sure if you're interested in the Moderna, to check out your options either in your local AJS dealer or on AJS Motorcycles website. So yeah, so it is typically Italian looking scooter. <coughs> There's a lot of similarities to the Vespa PX, which let's face it, if you're going to uh, take examples from an Italian scooter, the Vespa, the Vespa PX is probably a really good shout uh, to try and get influence from. Now, shall we do storage first, shall we? Take the key out of there. And in here we have this little uh, box or storage area. It's not hinged, so it comes completely out, as you can see. So enough of a few small bits and pieces, but obviously you're not going to fit um, milk or bread or something in there, unless you've got the world's smallest, you know, loaf of bread. Um, so that goes in there. Like I say, not hinged, but it's not really a problem because it stays on the key. And then if we go to the under seat, um, take my fuel receipt out of there and my uh, cheat sheet. So the storage underneath is not big enough uh, for a helmet. Um, but, you know, it's enough for a few small bits like your phone, maybe like a grip lock or something like that. Um, and then, obviously, fuel cap here. Let's take that off and quickly talk about that. You see that little bar? Hopefully you can see that bar down there. Uh, when you fill up, I believe you go to that line and not beyond it because you put too much pressure in there and you do fill up with just normal unleaded fuel. Don't go putting any fancy stuff in. So, yeah, that's the under seat storage. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, go looking at the switch gear and the the dash. So very minimalist as you expect, and it's something I'm actually loving more and more to be honest. So let's take a seat. So very simplistic but very clean. Very it's really stylish. So yeah, speedo there in miles per hour and kilometres. Um, obviously um, your your little thing uh, covering your mileage there. Um, we've got the little light for your indicators uh, for your main beams as well. And we've also got a bit there uh, for about your electrics and a fuel gauge there. So really, really simple, but stylish. And it, it's nice, you've got a fuel gauge, you don't have to worry. It's really nice, clean. Dash telling you how many miles you're doing as well. So all in all, it's just really nice. Now onto the actual kind of switch gear itself. Um, onto this left hand side here, this is your lights, obviously it's Euro 4 compliant so you have uh, daylights going all the time anyway but this is between dipped and high beam. Uh, we've also got the indicator which is the traditional push left and then click in to cancel or push right and click in to cancel. Uh, underneath we have the horn there which we shan't do because Mr Alex is doing the Cadwell Coven over there. Uh, over here we have a little switch to put on hazards and the electric start for when you pull the brake in. A uh, little hook down here for any bags. And yeah, so that's basically it. Um, obviously, although I say uh, the luggage is, uh, the storage is a bit limited, sorry, like under the seat and here, you do have those additional racks, which I think you could put about five kilograms on each. So nice little options, especially if you're going to, you know, a scooter rally or something like that. It is nice. So yes, the AJS Moderna is produced in China. But obviously when it comes over here it's all branded as AJS. Now AJS is obviously uh, an old heritage motorcycle brand in the UK. Uh, a lot of people heard of it. Obviously not under the same ownership as it all came to a stop so many years ago. But AJS is back with Chinese bikes. And it's that AJS brand that I think will attract a lot of people to the Moderna. They're getting a good reputable uh, bike. And it's a name that everyone in motorcycle pretty much has heard of before and obviously AJ's have a pretty good setup with uh, dealers and spare parts and so on so as we're going along here it's time to wrap up this road test review on the AJ's Moderna 
it really has surprised me. Yes, it is cheap and it does have cheap aspects like all the plastic work, um, but it's that plastic work that makes this scooter 95 kilograms. That's what adds to the character and just the rideability of this scooter. So, you know, every cloud. So yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed uh, this little road test review on the AGS Moderna. If you have, please hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments about the Moderna, leave them below. If you own the Moderna already, let us know your feedback on it. How do you get on with it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Have you had any problems? Leave that below. We always try our best to respond to any uh, serious questions that are or thoughts that are put in the comments. Um, if you're not already subscribed to the Bike Matters YouTube channel, please hit that red subscribe button. And while you're there, there is that little bell icon. Hit that and you'll be notified of all of our content when it's released on the YouTube. So thank you very much for watching everybody and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>